Well, good morning, ABC family from Tanzania, East Africa. At least we're going to be taking you on that trip today. And we want to be praising God for the trip that we were able to take in March. Uh, we are so thankful and so blessed uh, because you were with us on our team. You were supporting us, your financial gifts, your prayer support. All of that was uh, just wonderful for us. And we want to praise God today for the things that he did on that trip and be sharing that with you today. I was a bit of a reluctant Jonah to go on this trip. Uh, at first, I thought just Mary was being called and I was going to stay here and uh, just watch the church and so forth. But it turned out that God wanted me to go and I needed to hear his voice and respond to that call. Uh, it was it was a little scary, a little uncomfortable uh, because of the things that we might be asked to do. And also uh, the team, I thought I would just go then and be a part of a larger team, but the team uh, mm -hmm. pared down and pretty soon it was just our leader, Alex, and Mary and I going on this trip. And God wanted it that way, I think, so he would get all the glory. Uh, we are just both so very thankful for each of you sending us and very thankful to the Lord for what he did. In the middle of COVID, he did miraculous things. <laughs> and it was an incredible um, time of, of, of a gift to us to be able to go. Um, for me, I was very excited to go back to my uh, home where I grew up in Tanzania. But at the same time, because of family things that have taken place in these last few years, it was rather a difficult decision. But God was definitely nudging me, and I said yes, but I went with a lot of fear and trepidation, just like Paul spoke about in 1 Corinthians 2, 1 through 5, and said I go with, you know, weakness and fear and trembling and without persuasive words. But then he says, I go in the Spirit's power. And the Lord kept impressing the, that on me. Mary, it is me who is going to work in and through you. Um, so we had a big marriage seminar to do, and that's not something I really was excited about. <laughs> but he went ahead of us, and he did miraculous things. So we want to share some of that with you. And if you'd like to join us on that journey... You're going to see some awesome pictures. And here you will see a map. And uh, this is Tanzania. It's on the southeast coast. And uh, we were about one hour inland. Uh, if you look at the blue part there, we're about an hour inland from there. This is uh, the uh, Michael and his family, and you'll see Alex, our leader there. Uh, what a great time we had with them. Mm. Yeah, it was an incredible time. And again, God's mercy bringing us during even COVID <laughs> and protecting. And um, just an honor to join our team leader, Alex, who you see in the picture, and Pastor Michael and his family of the Mwandizi Church. And his wife, Monica, and all the girls were very helpful to us each and every day. Um, we were being sent to this town of Mlandizi, but what we didn't realize was how far-reaching this particular ministry was. So Pastor Michael is completely dedicated to the vision and passion God gave him for the Muslim community where he himself came out of an Islamic faith. And he's now moving beyond his community to surrounding towns and remarkably with God's leading. He's changing the face of Tanzania by leading and training pastors and their wives from all over the nation by God's love. And uh, again, this is just Pastor Michael and our leader, Alex, uh, from the Save the Nations. As he started that this last year, it was great to partner with these men of God. And then in our first, very first day, we were brought out to a Maasai village. And I had an opportunity there that uh, was just an amazing door that the Lord opened. Um, the men we were sharing with these Maasai leaders 
They're from uh, different uh, uh, villages in the area. And uh, I was asking them what's important to them. And we were talking about different things. And we, we began to talk about spiritual things. And one of them said, well, we believe in Mount Sinai. And both uh, Pastor Michael and I were kind of shocked to hear that. Uh, they brought that up. But it opened up an opportunity to talk about the Ten Commandments and why we need a Savior because we've broken God's holy law. And so I praise God for a chance to share that uh, Jesus was that Savior for us uh, with this uh, group of men. And during that time, I met with the women and alongside me, um, Monica and Pastor Michael's wife and um, a Maasai lady who is in the red um, shawl there. Uh, she is a Maasai pastor who comes to minister to these women. There are very few men who come out of the Maasai group who become pastors. Um, so I had a wonderful time sharing with the women how valuable they are to God, how much he loves them, that he sees them, that he cares for them as individuals and as women. Um, they were very gracious and very grateful for the time that I had with them, um, saying that I was, we were really the first white people to come in their, to their community and listen to their concerns and care for them and pray for them. So I also had during this time a sharing and question time regarding pregnancy and childbirth as part of my extended work um, with the CPC here and then was able to pray with um, some of the women concerning their uh, medical problems and, and childbirth issues. Um, and in this picture, it's just the ladies and I who are, um, they're all a part of the leadership for this group. And here's a picture of their new church. Uh, they're just uh, building this church bit by bit. And there uh, looks maybe small uh, from our standard, but it's a good size to them. They're very excited about this new church building. Then they took us uh, also for a meal. Uh, one donor for our trip had specifically donated uh, so that we could pass that on. And they purchased a goat for us. This is a goat meal. They roast it. And you can see that the table is really uh, the leaves on the ground. And uh, the leader there was cutting uh, the, the goat piece by piece and handing it to each person one by one. So it's a very communal way to eat together. The very next day, we were uh, told that there were going to be baptisms. And uh, we were excited about that. And then Pastor Michael said to me, well, Pastor John, I want you to do the baptizing tomorrow. And so a lesson for me is just to be ready for the unexpected. When we make ourselves available to God, uh, he is going to use us in ways we hadn't uh, imagined. And uh, just to be ready for whatever it is that he's presenting. So here in this picture is a young man uh, who's uh, giving his life to Jesus. And here's a beautiful picture of uh, a lady who's coming out of Islam and receiving Christ. And you just see the joy uh, that is there as she's uh, uh, committing herself to the Lord. This young man, Alex, is one of the men who was baptized there. He's also uh, a member of their church now and also a worship leader who really has a great heart for the Lord and wants to continue to grow and serve the Lord. And here you see Pastor Michael's church, the Community Life Church. There's our leader, Alex, there. And Alex, uh, in, in uh, leading our team, did a lot of sharing, teaching. His gift is in teaching and raising up leaders. Uh, that's uh, his vision. And so there were several times on Sundays and during seminars that Alex was sharing and, and teaching. Also, we had wonderful translators that did a great work of translating for us. And we really enjoyed the worship, spirit-filled worship. These people love to just worship Jesus. Uh, it was uh, a back and forth often kind of worship where a leader might sing a line and then the congregation would respond or repeat the line. Beautiful and wonderful worship. 
I don't have a picture here, but we were also invited to home fellowships and really enjoyed our time in those home fellowships. Uh, on Pastor Michael's heart is discipleship, and he wants people meeting in homes where they're reading the Bible and growing in their faith. And here is uh, Mary um, uh, talking to some children. This was on the path between the place where we were staying and Pastor Michael's house. They were inviting us there every day for meals. But along the way, these kids would come and Mary would start talking to them, sharing her Swahili and her love for the Lord. We had a wonderful opportunity to meet at um, a school which Pastor Michael and team uh, started there on the outskirts of Mlandizi, uh, reaching outward into his community. In this particular area, there were about eight uh, different Muslim schools, but uh, no Christian schools set up. And so he began that Christian schools, and to date, about five of those schools uh, Muslim schools have closed, and this one uh, school remains um, a very prominent school. The government has given a high, high stand standing for it. Um, when we arrived, the kids were, we were immediately just surrounded by the kids, pounced on by the kids, and they wanted to feel our hair and run with us, and <laughs> they were just elated to see us. It was a wonderful time. And we were able to minister to them through story and song. And here they're all uh, following along with some hand motions. And then we shared the gospel with them by using a form using colors, colored t-shirts. And um, some of you know it as the wordless gift, uh, the wordless book. Um, and... Um, so this little girl was one that came up front and was able to have the different t-shirts on, the red one for the blood of Jesus that covers our sin, and then the white t-shirt, uh, he makes us white as snow, and then there's a yellow t-shirt reminding us of heaven, and the kids were so incredibly attentive. And now those t-shirts are being used to reward kids for their good behavior during the school day. So... Um, there will be kids running around in those t-shirts for a day. and But at the same time, they'll be remind, remember what um, the different colors represented. This is a picture of a lady um, whose name is Naila. Now, Naila is actually the Tanzania representative for Moms in Prayer International. And, which is a, a group that I'm connected with here, Moms in Prayer, all over Arizona and all over the U.S. And I was able to connect with Naila while I was still here in the U.S. And then amazingly, we met out there and we were able to work alongside each other to bring Moms in Prayer to the community there of Mlandizi women. Um, the women were just overjoyed to be able to meet together, pray together for their kids in their schools, and, and learn a new format of prayer using four steps of praising the Lord for who he is, silent confession, thanksgiving, and then actually interceding and praying for their kids in schools. And this was the first and very significant outreach for the women of this particular community. Um, and the blessing is that Naila will be following up with them. And it also is going into other communities of Tanzania because there were pastors' wives from various areas all over, from all over Tanzania. So I'm excited to see how that goes. Um, we also had a widow's ministry that we were that the entire team was involved with. And um, here you see um, um, one of the moms who a grandma who's caring for her grandchildren. And this is her home. And before we came, they spent a lot of time sweeping the grounds and making sure everything was cleaned up and ready for us. They're just so gracious and generous. Um, we 
were incredibly blessed by their joy and their trust in Jesus in the midst of their very difficult circumstances and poverty. So a real testimony to our heart to once again really appreciate the extreme blessings that we have been given. And this is another one of the widows we got to visit on that uh, trip. And uh, she is a, a recently given her life to Jesus, lives in the community near the church, and has just started attending the church. Uh, she waited five hours for us to arrive. She had set up a table for us and had uh, some food to share with us, uh, just so generous. And as Pastor Michael was taking this picture, he said, uh, I know you have the joy of the Lord. Let's see the joy of the Lord. And so we took this picture. And then in her, uh, uh, behind her house in another yard, we saw uh, these uh, were, were set up to false gods, worship of false gods and demons. And so it's a, it's a picture to us of the spiritual battle going on right in her neighborhood. This picture is another widow and her daughter uh, who we got to visit with. And uh, their story is that they were on the streets and had no place to live. And then uh, the Lord led them to find this house uh, the owners of this house had to travel and they wanted someone to watch the house. So they are able to live in this house for free. But Pastor Michael let us know they are living on about one dollar a day. And that's really true for uh, many, many people. Um, as you can see from this uh, picture here, um, there's a lot of poverty, a lot of need. Um, this is actually a, a home, um, a, an Islamic home. Uh, however, the older lady in this picture in the middle, she accepted Jesus and had been coming to all of our meetings. And um, she has a lot of medical needs. And so she had asked me to come and pray for her. So I prayed for the older woman there in the middle but then suddenly this relative came up after our prayer and said, would you pray for me too? I'm, my whole body is hurting. And so um, I went through prayer with her. And um, after that, I asked her, do you know this Jesus who we're praying to? And she said, no. And so I asked if she would like to know who he is and she said yes and so that led to us sharing the gospel with her and then her receiving Jesus mm -hmm. and Pastor yeah. Michael is right there uh, beside her and he and his team will um, definitely be reaching out to each one of these um, that receive Jesus um, that's his his heart cry for this entire community to know Jesus saving love and the older gentleman here at the time, uh, we asked if we could pray for him, but he said no. He was um, a little bit negative. However, later on that week, he had some serious medical issues come up. And who did he call but Pastor Michael because he's seen the love of Christ and he's seen um, that Christians embrace uh, out of the love of Christ regardless of your, your religion. And the Lord allowed us to do a one-day marriage seminar, and uh, Mary and I would share back and forth through the day. Uh, the Lord gave us uh, what he wanted us to share. We used a, a SALT series on marriage that we had used here in the church before. Uh, pastor Michael had invited uh, many pastors and leaders and pastor's wives from around Tanzania because of his heart that they would have uh, good, healthy uh, marriages and uh, to bring back to their churches. Also a, a leader seminar that we were able to do for two days. Um, and then in this, uh, for those two days, um, Alex and myself would go back and forth uh, teaching uh, and sharing different uh, sessions. And in this session, um, I had just shared about the 30 days of discipleship. Uh, the same book that we had gone through at our church, and they were very excited about that. I uh, translated the lessons, uh, some of the lessons into 
Swahili just so they could see the verses. And we asked them to do a lesson, and here you see them doing that. They're so excited about this material that they now have translated the whole book, uh, and it now has already gone out into several fellowships at Pastor Michael's church, and also the pastors here have taken it back to their churches. And it's great to see the fruit as uh, God is just blessing uh, this, uh, this seminar that we were able to bring there. And I would add to that that um, there was a pastor in this group that was from Madagascar, and Madagascar is about 80, uh, 98 percent uh, Muslim. And so um, the heart of Pastor Michael and, and this pastor is to reach that community with the love of Jesus and let them know that their sin can be forgiven because of God's shed blood, and that they can receive eternal life in Jesus' name. And here's Pastor Michael with a pastor in his church, uh, Paul, and he is uh, uh, the very that same night that we presented it, he's there with Paul sharing how he can use, or training Paul, to use this discipleship material. So our time was incredible. We felt incredibly blessed. We felt incredibly loved by this community. Um, what incredible, uh, gracious hearts and, and joyful in the Lord these people are. So in this picture, this is the last day we were with them. Um, they gave us a Tanzanian blessing. And I... Uh, have a, the piece of material you see there at the end is the one that they brought up for us and the other one was for Alex and along with song they came up and wrapped us in this while the entire church joined in in praising the Lord. And on our last day as we were getting to, to leave Umlandizi we had a chance to visit Pastor Michael's brother uh, Anthony, and he's showing us here his uh, shop. Uh, this is uh, how he's making a living, and uh, his uh, wife is a nurse as well. And they, the vision is that he would be able to save enough to get trained, uh, get Bible training, and to be a pastor himself. And then God gave us a chance to uh, visit uh, yet another missionary couple, and. Uh, uh, this uh, this missionary uh, went to the same school as Mary. Yep, this is uh, Steve and Bethany. Uh, Steve is a doctor, and Bethany works um, alongside him with the Maasai people. Um, uh, we're going to the next picture. <laughs> Here you see a picture of some of his work um, in Maasai land. It's a very... Um, simple clinic, and yet he says it's simple, but it does everything he needs. You can see the mosquito nets there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but in this situation, there was a young man who'd been bitten by a snake, and so he had done some surgery there, and the family was there visiting with him. There was also another man who had had malaria. Hmm. Um, and here you see one of the uh, Maasai homes in the community. You might notice the smokestack there. They, those have not always been there. Uh, in previous uh, years, these uh, uh, homes would be filled with smoke. It would be bad for the kids. They might get burned. And so Bethany and Steve uh, found uh, this unit. It's a, it's a stove that can be put into the home. And um, it, uh, obviously the smoke goes up and out. They're able to cook. It's much safer for the family. And uh, now there's over a hundred homes in that community that have this. Oh, um, this is a picture of a new uh, baby that was born. And so Steve also delivers babies. And so he asked if we would like to go and visit this uh, new young mom. So this is a picture um, with us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, well, and one of these uh, two men is a Maasai warrior, wondering if you can figure out which one. And uh, this uh, nice gentleman uh, also led us uh, 
around where we needed to go, and he's been losing his sight. He's lost an eye, but uh, just a great uh, help to us. This is uh, also a picture of one of the homes. You might notice something interesting there. Actually has a solar panel, and uh, so you can see the that they're also laying hold of new technology. I wanted to show you this picture of a bathroom. This is actually uh, the, the missionary couple. This is their bathroom in their home. This has been their bathroom for 20 years. And it spoke to me of uh, just willing to give up for the Lord uh, what we might consider even common comforts. We were um, uh, out uh, in the villages quite a bit, but also in the city. This is uh, the city of Arusha to give you a view of what that might look like. And also, uh, you can see uh, we several times ran into this mode of transportation where um, uh, very muddy roads, we were there in the rainy season, oftentimes very hard to navigate uh, some of the different roads. And we just wanted to close our time with a few other pictures of some people. We just had many opportunities to listen to people, hear from their heart, and pray with them. Um, uh, this is the young man and his mom um, that John baptized here. And he was also in my home fellowship group. He's probably about 12 years old. He was very much... Um, uh, interested in his Bible, and he was the one that opened it and read for the rest of us in our group. And it's just my belief that this one will become a pastor in Tanzania. And this is Mama Anna. Mama Anna is uh, Pastor Michael's wife's mom, and she and Monica and the rest of the girls just spent endless hours in the kitchen making breakfast and lunch and dinner for us, homemade meals, along with multiple meals for the church gatherings with all those people. So, you know, a hundred people to serve. And um, I just uh, had a lot of heart-to-heart -heart <laughs> contact mm -hmm. with them. Mm -hmm. This is uh, one of the pastor's wives uh, at the church, and uh, she's also ministering uh, as a worship leader at the church. And here you see this uh, young lady was along the side of the road as we were driving along and taking care of the animals, and you can see some of the traditional dress. And this uh, joyful uh, lady kind of shows the, the joy of this whole trip to us, the joy of Jesus. Uh, she had just come uh, out of Islam, given her life to Jesus, and was her first day at the church. And again, we just want to appreciate Pastor Michael, his vision and his, his leading, not only as in his community, but for all of Tanzania. And I think it speaks to the children that are there who are the next generation. You know, they, um, they're saying thank you too for sending us, for allowing us to go, and we're all exciting, excited about how the Lord will change Tanzania for His glory through this opportunity. That's all of our pictures. God bless you. Thank you so much again for your prayer and support of this trip, and, and who knows what God may be calling us to do next.